بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم we seek the protection of god from shaitan who has been disqualified from god's kingdom of special grace and mercy because of his satanic habits of arrogance and defiance if we avoid the satanic habit of arrogance whatever we know to be true by the guidance of the god given intellect and the divine revelation and the human conscience we submit and if we avoid the satanic habit of defiance whatever we know to be wrong by the guidance of the god given intellect the divine revelation the human conscience we don't commit and if we have reliance on god definitely will get the strength to be able to decipher what is right and wrong to have the strength to accept what is right and to fight against evil bismillahir rahmanir rahim we humbly seek the grace and guidance from god because he is the all perfect being nobody can achieve any goodness until and unless allah wills it so and we ask for his grace and guidance because he is rahman his rahma his mercy his love is universal reaches out to each and every entity brings it to life and then enables it to reach its goal of creation and we ask for his grace and guidance because he is a rahim he is ever flowing abundant eternal supportive rewarding mercy is available but only to those who believe in him and who submit to his will alhamdulillah all praise belongs to god and god alone to whom belong all the excellent names some of these beautiful perfect excellent attributes of god are mentioned in some duas for example dua mujir or dua samat or dua jawshan kabir in dua jawshan kabir there is one verse where we describe god with these 10 different names that he is the best with these particular qualities ya khair al ghafirin so allow me to praise him by these names allahumma lak al hamd Oh Allah all praise belongs to you and you alone because you are khair al ghafirin wa ya khair al fatihin wa ya khair al nasirin wa ya khair al hakimin wa ya khair al raziqin wa ya khair al warithin wa ya khair al hamidin wa ya khair al zakirin wa ya khair al munzilin wa ya khair al muhsinin Praise belongs to God and God alone because he is the best of those who forgive and pardon. All sins can be forgiven by God. Even the worst of the sins, shirk can be forgiven if a person sincerely repents and changes and converts to tawhid. And praise belongs to him and him alone. who is khairul fatihin he opens all types of closures and strictures and difficulties he can rescue us and liberate us from them or no fatihin also means he is the best of the judges in the quran there is mention of a prophet who went to his people promulgated the truth they refused to accept and ultimately he prays to allah ربنا افتح بيننا وبين قومنا او الله يو اوبن اب اند يو جادج وات از رايت اند وات از رونغ اي بيرفورم ماي ديوتي ذي ار ريفيوزينغ تو اكسبت ذا تروث وانت خير الفاتحين يو ار ذا بيست اوف ذا جادجز هو ويل ديسايد هاو ذا تروث ويل بي جيفن فيكتري هاو فالس هود ويل بي ديفيتد ويا خير الناصرين الله از ذا بيست اوف ذا هيلبرز ايفري انديفيدوال از ليميتد ان ذير بينغ they've got limited powers they will definitely face a situation in life where they will feel their powers powerlessness or the limitation to their powers 
Allah is the one who is the best and the most powerful of the helpers for all individuals at all times even when they think they have the power as mentioned in surah ali imran balillahu mawlakum why do you depend on others why do you feel lowly if you have the true faith and you believe in the master of the universe who controls everything don't depend and subjugate yourself to the evil powers allah is khayrun nasireen he's the best of the providers and the helpers and he's the best of the judges and the best of the one who will restore justice we go to a judge to find justice the mazloom and the oppressed who cannot have any recourse to any justice from other human beings ultimately allah is the best restorer and provider of justice ya khayr al for example in surah jumu'ah wa idha ra'u tijaratan aw lahwan in faddu ilayha during the time of salatul jumu'ah it so happened there was a shortage of some provisions in the city of Medina and then a trade caravan arrived and they made their sounds of bell to advertise their arrival hurry up before you miss if you finish your salah you'll miss your share so there are some people who left Salatul Jumu'ah the khutbah they went and rushed to purchase the merchandise so Allah says قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهْوِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ tell them that what is there with God and to receive from God by attendance of Jumu'ah by praying to God by relying on God is much better much more powerful much more lasting much more beneficial and blessed than what you will get from this temporary worldly merchandise Kwanini Wallahu khayru raziqeen this is one trade caravan who do you think sent the caravan who do you think brought back the caravan who do you think brought the merchandise at this particular time all this amount with this particular price other than Allah and we praise him he's the khayrul warithin the best of the inheritors everyone is going to die ultimately Allah will inherit everyone if you are the best of the inheritors one of the messengers Prophet Zakaria Praise to God, O oh Allah, I'm childless. Rabbi la tazarni fardan wa anta khayrul warithin. And if you're the best of the inheritors, make me also inherit and grant me a child. And Yahya alayhi salam was blessed to him at his advanced age. Ya khayr al hamidin, O the best of those who praise and appreciate. Ya khayr al zakirin, O the one who is the best in remembrance. Allah says, remember me and I will remember you. Remember me in your lowly worldly circles and I'll remember you in the high heavenly angelic circles which are much more blessed and more powerful. And remember me in all times, in good times and bad times and I will provide you abundantly at all times. I'll remember you at all times. We are khair al-munzilin. Or the one who is the best of those who sends down. Nuh alayhi salam, when the ark was flowing and it was reaching its destination, he says, Oh Allah, Rabbi anzilni munzalan mubaraka. Oh Allah, make me arrive and anchor and stop at a place which is blessed, where your bounties are there, where I'll get success. Wa anta khayrul munzilin. And this is a mustahab dua to be made whenever we go and arrive at a destination to pray to God to bless us in the arrival we are khayr al or the one who is the best of those who do good in ihsan hal jazaul ihsani illa al ihsan whosoever does good Allah never ever wastes ignores dismisses squanders away the efforts that have been made by the good doers praise be to him and him alone Usikum ibad Allah wa nafsi bitaqwa Allah. Community of believers, I wish to remind you as I do myself the necessity of taqwa. Taqwa has been one message which has been common to all the messengers. So, for example, in Surah Shu'ara, chapter 26, 
Allah repeats the messages of different messengers. Nuh alayhi salam, for example, he told his people, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ نُوحٌ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Don't you fear God? And stop worshipping powers other than God. Revert back to Him in Tawheed and leave your shirk and your sinful ways. إِنِّي لَكُمْ رَسُولٌ أَمِينٌ I'm a messenger. I've come with miracles to prove that I am a man of God. Ameen, and I'm trustworthy. Whatever message I've received, I don't add, I don't subtract. I deliver faithfully and sincerely. Fattakullah, and therefore follow this command of God delivered through me to you. Fear Him and follow Him. Wa ati'un, and also obey me as the commander appointed and as the authority designated by God over you. And the same message of taqwa, of obedience, of fear of God, is repeated for different messengers. So, in ayah number 124, Hud tells the same message to his people, Ad, ala tattaqoon. In ayah 142, Salih tells his people, Thamud, ala tattaqoon. In ayah number 161, Lut السلام, tells his people, Ala tattaqoon. Different messages to different communities where there were different types of sins and disobedience and rebellion and rejection and denial of the message of God. And therefore, accordingly, there was emphasis on specific problems that had to be addressed. One of them was the community of Lut. السلام. Lut his story is mentioned several times in the Quran in Surah A'raf, in Surah Hud, in Surah Hijr, in Surah Shu'ara which I just quoted in Surah Ankabut, in Surah Qamar but the most detailed discussion appears in some surahs so for example Surah A'raf or in Surah Hud I would like to remind ourselves the message of Taqwa based on what Lut السلام, told his people. وَلُوطًا in Surah A'raf وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ Remember the time when we sent our special messenger Lut السلام, to his people. أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَا مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ All oh my people do you commit an act which is fahisha, which is uh, indecent, which is an abomination, which is an evil act, and which is grossly lewd and indecent and immoral, and you know it. Notice Lut salam doesn't appeal that this is the proof why this act, the same sex relationships that you have, is immoral. Fahisha is something which the human conscience and the human fitra recognizes. Ata'atun al fahisha. What is wrong with you? Why do you perform this? Notice he is appealing to their conscience, their God given pure nature, whereby we recognize one of sin. And I swear, God says, by my majesty and my power and my wisdom that have created this beautiful nafs of the insan. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا And inherently an inborn, there is an awareness and a consciousness of what is good and what is evil. Justice is good. Injustice is evil. I will never forget this message that we heard from a communist, godless, atheist person when there was a meeting for solidarity with the Palestinian cause, whereby there was oppression going on. And he said that we have Muslims here and Christians and followers of other heavenly faiths. I'm not a believer, he said. I believe in humanity. 
human rights dictate that it is wrong these acts of injustice and oppression and discrimination and suppression and oppression that is happening in the occupied territories. The human being has been granted this much conscience whereby he knows what's right, what's wrong. And Nuh and Lut السلام, is therefore appealing to that conscience. But uh, we are not the first ones who are doing this, they may say. There were others who did it. Traditions, well, forefathers did this and therefore we follow them. So Lut السلام, says, مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ Nobody before you committed these acts. Oh, you haven't inherited it from someone. You can't say I was born with these natural urges. Well, where did you inherit it? God the Creator did not give it to you. Your forefathers did not do it. And acts are not inheritable. They are not genetically transmissible. So nobody can claim that these urges are there in a person by birth by genetic force. Interesting, scientists have tried to study this phenomena of attraction to the same sex. What is the cause? Why does it happen in some people? So they're saying, we don't know the exact reasons, maybe it's a family background, what is the relationship that the child had with the same sex parent. Um, when the child was growing up, during the developmental stages, the formative years, what teachings and what sort of norms were taught to the child. When the child was growing up, did they have any sexual experience? Did they experience some sort of seduction from somebody? Did they suffer some abuse, God forbid, sexual abuse from somebody? And his self-concept therefore is shaped accordingly. Scientists even explored biological reasons why people may have same-sex urges. But the interesting thing is they haven't found any definitive conclusive evidence. The American Psychological Association, they declare there is no consensus among scientists about the exact reasons why a person develops same-sex urges. Although much research has been done, the American psychologists say, to examine the possible effect of genetics, of hormonal influences. Sometimes you may say, oh, you know, there are chemicals in the human beings that determine the sex chemicals and hormones that determine attraction, female chemicals, male chemicals, no, hormonal evidence is not conclusive. Developmental factors, social factors, cultural influences on the sexual orientation. No findings, they say, have emerged which permit the scientists to conclude that sexual orientation is determined by any specific factor. But these are factors that can play a role. Where you grow up, how you grow up, who do you associate with, what do you allow yourself to be impressed by, influenced by, stimulated by. So Surah Araf continues, Lut السلام, tells his people, إِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ مِن دُونِ النِّسَى What's the problem with you? You go to your same-sex men and you abandon women. Why? إِنَّكُمْ I, I'm sorry, I skipped one word. To me, that's a crucial word. I'm repeating the ayah now. إِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِن دُونِ النِّسَى You are exciting yourself, provoking yourself, stimulating yourself, exposing yourself to environments where your shahwa for the men are provoked. مِن دُونِ النِّسَى Bal conclusion, antum qawmun musrifun. You are a transgressing, extravagant, sinful, excessively violating of the limits which God has set. You are willfully, deliberately, 
consciously, voluntarily engaging in this behavior which you know to be wrong. Of course, the ayah then continues that they rejected what he was trying to say to them. Interesting is in Surah Hud, a different approach is mentioned of Lut salam to his people. So in Surah Araf, we know why were they behaving in that particular way. In Surah Hud, Allah tells us how Lut is trying to change them, to guide them, to stop them, to uh, prevent them from carrying out this sinful behavior. وَلَمَّا جَاءَتْ رُسُلُنَا لُوطًا Remember the time when our special messengers, the angels, came in a human form. Beautiful, handsome men came to Lut as a guest. See Abihim. Lut, instead of being happy to receive guests, normally Lut and Ibrahim were very hospitable, generous people. He got worried when he saw these guests. He was, he was distressed. He, he was grieved. Uh, because he was worried what was going to happen to these beautiful looking men by his people. And he felt almost powerless and helpless to be able to prevent them from suffering a particular predicament. And he complained, This is going to be a very difficult day for me once my people come to know about these handsome guests. Lot, father of the community, prophet to the community, concerned, generous, hospitable, unhappy of what, how his people will behave. The next ayah then says, وَجَاءَهُ قَوْمُهُ يُهْرَعُونَ إِلَيْهِ they came at a distance, presumably in his, in his garden or farm outside the city. Somehow the people came to know. There are some handsome guests who have arrived at Lut's place. So they rushed to him in a frenzy. يُهْرَعُونَ إِلَيْهِ وَمِنْ قَبْلُ كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ How do you explain this? frenzied behavior rushing to the guests of Lut. Well, because they were already habituated in evil. They knew it was wrong. They continuously did it. And now it was a habit for them. They enjoyed it more than the halal activity. Qala ya qawmi. Lut salam, when he was confronted with them, he tried to admonish them, to guide them, to, to uh, alert them, to awaken them. Ya qawmi. My people. What you're doing is wrong. L l let me tell you halal. There's a halal way of doing things. Ha banati. These are my daughters. Lot as the prophet to the people or the father of the community. Everyone, therefore, is his son or daughter. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi his... Oh, In Surah Ahzab, Allah says, "An-Nabiyyu awla bil mu'minin min anfusihim, wa azwajuhu ummahatuhum." The wives of the Prophet are the mothers of the believers, and therefore, the Prophet is the father of the believers. Lut alayhi salam is the father, the guide, the protector, the provider, the one who's caring and concerned about the development of the community. He says. These are the daughters, halal, why don't you have relationships with them? Or no, my own daughters, he's saying, they are there available for you. There is a halal solution for the problem. <laughs> Fear God. Oh, but I can't do it. Uh, I have this uncontrollable urge. No, Allah will never ask you to fear and to obey and to follow some command. If it is beyond your control, it's unfair. The fact that Lut salam offers a halal solution and then commands accept them and fear God of the evil consequences of your choices that you make. وَلَا تُخْزُونِي fi don't embarrass me, don't disgrace me, don't degrade me by your evil behavior in front of my guests as the father, as a parent, 
as a responsible person, I cannot allow an embarrassing, shameful activity to be carried out by the children. Don't disgrace me, Lut tells them. Alaysa minkum rajulun rashid. Everyone quiet, unwilling to listen. Is there not a single man amongst you who is right minded? Who is sane? Who understands what's right and wrong? This is obviously wrong what you're doing. Amazing. Anybody in his proper senses will not do this. All of this shows that these are conscious, deliberate choices which are being made by individuals to engage in this sort of behavior. But then let us say a person has grown up in an environment where for whatever reasons, developmental reasons or hormonal reasons or biological reasons, urges have developed. Where you have people who have an urge to take drugs, an urge to drink alcohol, an urge to God forbid, commit zina, an urge to engage in gambling, an urge to sin, basically. Well, that's where the test is, that we need to identify these urges, we need to recognize what these urges are, we need to realize that Allah has given us a power within us which is much more greater, much more powerful than the animal desires. These arise from our animal our lower being, Allah has given us a nafs and a ruh, which is much higher, much stronger, and more effective in controlling, in moderating, in taming, in harnessing these energies that Allah has given. So long as there's an urge within, and it is not expressed, and the person feels unhappy, and the person struggles to control them, Allah will reward them. As in Surah Baqarah, in Ayah number 281, Allah says that, wal ard. To Allah alone belongs everything that is in the heavens and the earth. The human beings, the stars, the heavens, the earth, everything belongs to Him. The human urges also, they are under control of God, if we turn to him, he can give us the power to control. And therefore he says, In tubdu ma fi anfusikum aw tukhfuhu yuhasibkum bihillah If you express or you suppress your urges, Allah knows them and therefore Allah will take you to account. And therefore you are responsible for these urges. How do you handle them? Oh, but I can't do it. It's very difficult. Help me. Oh, yes, there is help. I would like to give you an example. A man came to the sixth holy imam. You know, sometimes uh, physicians in the past would prescribe alcohol as a treatment for some illnesses. Alcohol is haram. So the hadith says that a person came and uh, there was an old man. He asked Imam alayhi salam, I have pain, unbearable pain. And so I drink a little of wine to, to, to control the pain. So Imam alayhi salam says, but uh, isn't there water to drink? Ja'alallahu minhu kulla shay'in hay. Allah has given strong powers to water. The old man says, it doesn't work for me. So Imam alayhi salam says, why don't you use honey? Allah has put shifihi shifa'un lin nas. There's curing and healing powers in honey. The old man said, doesn't work for me. Imam says then, why don't you use milk? You know, Allah has created milk with properties whereby even the young baby's bones and flesh grow. It's got a strong, supportive, nutritive force. The man said, doesn't work for me. Imam said, no. Oh, so you want me now to make haram halal for you? I'm giving you alternatives and you keep on refusing. When there is a halal alternative to go towards haram, not allowed. Except in one situation, it is allowed. You're allowed to drink blood. You're allowed to eat swine flesh. You're allowed to eat haram and drink haram if you have to save your life. And this is a fatwa about alcohol also. But even alcohol, 
Hazrat Ayyad al-Sistani, may Allah protect our maraja, he's got a very strict fatwa. All the maraja will tell you, if there's no other halal alternative available, the only alternative is alcohol for you to survive or for you to control an unbearable pain. Then it is allowed to consume but to the minimum amount which can relieve you. And he says that even then, even then, when it is allowed, control yourself. Allah will help you. I was surprised when I read this fatwa. Then I came across a hadith which explains this fatwa. Abdullah bin Abi Ya'far says that I used to suffer some unbearable pain. So whenever it used to uh, intensify, uh, my family would offer me some, some wine to drink to control that pain. So one day uh, I visited Imam alayhi salam, the barakah of going for ziyarah and to visit the holy imams. I went to visit the imam and I told him about this pain and the drinking of wine. Imam says, Yabna Abi Ya'far, la tashrabhu. Don't drink. Innahu haram. It's not allowed. Innama hada shaytan muwakkalun bika. Falaw qad yaisa mink zahab. Let me tell you a secret. Spiritual secret. There's a shaytan, the chief commander has appointed a small shaytan to come to you and to play with your mind. You learn how to resist and he will go away. Ibn Abi Ya'far says, from Medina, I went back to Kufa. The pain came back. Strong pain. Almost unbearable. I was writhing in pain. My family came and felt pity for me, sympathy for me. And he said, no, please, you, you, this is unbearable. No, la wallah, I swear by God, no, I will not take a sip from this. And the pain continued and continued one day, two days, few days, then it went away, never to return. It's a battle between the body and the mind and the spirit. If anybody doubts, fasting should have proven to us in the month of Ramadan that Allah has given within us a force of goodness, of perfection, of power much greater than our body. And shaitan is a jinn who is a lower creation who had to make sajda to Adam and he is still bound to make sajda to the sons of Adam. Let's pray to Allah for tawfiq. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wal Asr. Allah swears by time. In all times, different situations arise, and we have to learn the divine lessons. In al insan alafi khusr. Man is in a state of loss. Illa ladina amanu. Except for those who believe in the higher power, the absolute power. Wa amilu salihat. And then they act according to their duty towards God. And then they spread this message of truth. And collectively they fight against evil.